Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Rice Dice, a Spirits of the Rice Paddy Dice Game, which is on Kickstarter right now, and I'm going to be doing a two-player run-through today, so you can see what it's all about. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel, so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then welcome to the fields, everybody, and welcome to the dice. Here are the five rice dice that come with this game. Uh, they all have the same actions, weeds, workers, wild cards, water, or cards. <laughs> I didn't just, I didn't realize that they were almost all W's, uh, except for cards. Uh, and actually, there's a sixth side, which is instead of a single worker, a double worker. Now, on your turn, you're going to be rolling all five of these dice and then choosing to do one action. And the whole point of this game is to plant and grow and harvest rice as fast as possible, because the first player to harvest 100 rice wins the game. This is a race, and I'm going to show you how it works today. And let's see, we've already got the game mostly set up. Now, I'm playing a two-player game, which means in the reserve, there are 10 water. If we were playing with three or four players, there would be more water in the reserve, but there's only 10 in a two-player game. All right, and we got our dice. Now, before we get going, everybody has to have one rice patty. So we just shuffle this deck up, and we'll see what everybody starts with, me and Jen. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, we draw three two, three. Okay, and the rest will come over here. There'll be more rice patties aplenty. And each of us, of these three, picks one. So I can start with crafty weeds, honorable workers, or rewarding harvest. And uh, this is going to be the first place that I can actually start trying to plant rice and score points. Now, the bigger the field, the, uh, the, the more hexes there are in a rice paddy, the more points it's worth when you actually harvest it. Since this is three, if I could get this thing entirely planted and harvested, I will score 10 points. Whereas both of these are only two, so if I get these planted, the two planted and then harvested, I'll score five points. Although if there are weeds when I harvest, I score fewer points in all of them. So I got to think about you know how big, because the, the bigger it is, the harder it is in a given turn to get this thing all planted and, and harvested and all that. But on the flip side, not only is there the size I got to think about, there's the special power. Whichever one of these I take gives me a power. Re uh, rewarding harvest. If I harvest this turn, uh, if, if I'm harvesting, take five rice. So that's just a really cool power. Whenever I choose to do any kind of harvesting, in addition to however many points I was supposed to get, I get five more. And remember, this is a race to 100 rice, so that's a really cool power. Honorable workers, this is the tougher one to fill out. But for each Awan card, Awan is one of the spirits. You can see I've got two Awan cards and a uh, Batara Kala card in my hand. For each Awan card I have in my fields, including this one, or each Awan card in my hand has two permanent workers. So that means if I have this and I've got, and if I actually, as I get more and more rice patties, I try to get Awan patties specifically, it's like I've got virtual workers so I don't have to be so reliant on rolling a lot of workers. So that's pretty cool. And then crafty weeds. This one means whenever I roll the weed result, instead of using it as an attack, because that's its only function, this is an attack die to hit your opponents, instead I could treat um, weeds as wild cards. So I don't have to be so attacking. I can be crafty with my weed results and do other things. You know what? I think I'm going to go with this one. So the other ones there uh, go to the bottom of the deck. Jen, meanwhile, she's choosing from Twisted Fate, Crafty Workers, or Prophecy. So Prophecy means every time she rolls, it's as if she rolls two additional cards. So if she wants to go for card actions very quickly, Prophecy will let her get a lot of cards really, really quick. And since it's four big, it's going to be tougher to fill in. You need 15. Um, or I mean, you get 15 points if you fill it uh, with water and then plant it and then empty it and then harvest it. That's a lot, but uh, which would be tough to do at the beginning of the game without other special powers. But on the flip side, this is going to let you, the more card results you get, the faster you can get more cards and make your rice patty bigger. Crafty workers. All workers, not doubles, single workers, count as a wild. So it's kind of like crafty weeds. Instead, crafty workers are wild cards or twisted fate. All um, card results count as wild. So there's two. So Jen could do either of these for wilds, or she could go for this thing that lets her get cards much, much quicker. 
I think she'll go for that one. Kind of crazy, but Jen's going to do this because she's going to try to get her um, patty, her fields filled out as fast as possible. And this is going to help her do that. Whereas me, I'm going to have more flexibility. And it means if I ever roll weeds, I don't have to use them as an attack. I can play a more friendly game. So anyway, these are the cards we didn't take. They just end up going back. And we are ready to go. I am the first player. We're both starting out with zero points. And what do you do on your turn? You roll the dice. Here we go. Wah! Okay, so what did I get? I got four workers and a wild card and a weed. And now, because I got crafty weeds, this weed is effectively another wild card. So let's go ahead and treat it as such. So now what am I going to do? Well, I can only do one action on my turn. In this case, I could do a worker action. If I did that, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six workers. So that'd be a very big, powerful worker action. But here's the problem. Right now, my workers can't do anything because your use of workers on your turn is to remove weeds if weeds have been um, clogging up your uh, fields. So I have no weeds, so I can't do that. Workers can also harvest. So if I have successfully grown rice, I could use workers to harvest it. I would need two workers to harvest a size two. But again, I haven't grown anything yet. And then the other thing workers can do is they can plant. So I would need two workers to plant a size two patty, but I can't do that until the patty has been flooded. Uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, that's the way these rice patties work. Once they're flooded with water, then you can plant the rice and let it grow. So right now, this would be an awesome worker turn, except my workers can't do anything yet. Um, so I don't think I'm going to use workers. Instead, I've got these two wild cards. And so that means I could treat these wild cards as two I could treat them as two workers, but I already talked about how I don't need workers. I could treat them as two weeds, which means I could hit Jen with weeds twice. I could treat them as two cards, which means I could draw two cards and pick one and add it to have a bigger uh, field overall. More rice patties, which means more special powers, which means more offense, options. I could treat it as water. And now that means I could actually start flooding. And you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, before I rolled, after we both chose our starting cards and we revealed what they were, we looked at the total water count of them. One, two, three. That means from the reservoir or from the supply. And in a two-player game, there are ten water tokens. With more players, there'd be more in the supply. As part of setup, after these were revealed, I put one, two, three water in the reservoir. These are this is the only water that we have to be able to fill our fields. And if we can't fill our fields with water, I need two to fill this double. If I can't do that, then I can't plant. If I can't plant, I can't harvest and score points. Jen's got a real problem. She would need four water to be able to fill this thing up. And there isn't four water available right now. But that's okay. Jen did not take this for the ability to plant and harvest. She took it for this ability to give herself a lot of cards really, really quick. Quickly. So, because she's just, uh, forget about the fields, Jen is just all about the prophecy. So anyway, it's my turn, this is what I rolled, and I'm going to treat these two wilds as if they are two water. So that means I've got a double water. Now, whenever somebody does water on their turn, first of all, everybody can partake in that turn. If other players have water in their fields, like say Den did at some point have four water in this field and she had already planted because hey, she had the water in her field, she had planted so that there is a lot of uh, rice to harvest. Um, now, she would want to get all the water out of the way because it's my turn and I'm choosing water. Even though it's my turn, if Jen wanted to, she could release all this water back to the reservoir so on a follow-up turn she could harvest. Now, that doesn't matter right now because Jen doesn't have any. Neither of us have any water, but the first thing you do on a water turn is all players have the option to release water, either back to the reservoir or it can go down the fields from an earlier patty to a later patty, which is a big part of the game. Is controlling the flow of water. But at the beginning of the game, nobody has any water, so we're skipping that. And now I'm going directly to the getting water. Because I have two water here, because it was really two wild cards, I can take up to two from the reservoir and have them start streaming through my patties. I'm going to have them start streaming, and I'm going to stop them right here. And now my patty, which has two spaces, is full of water. I have to have exactly two. If I was only getting one water for some reason, it wouldn't be any good. The water would not, this would not be enough to fill it. So it would keep on going. And if it's got no place to go, it goes back to the, it goes all the way back to the reservoir. But as it is, I got the two I needed to fill this up. Now I'm ready on a future turn to actually plant because my two hexes are flooded by two water. So that was my turn.
It's over. It is now Jen's turn. She takes the five dice. She rolls them up. And let's see. All right. So Jen's got a choice. She's got a triple weed. Remember, I said weeds are attack cards. For me, they're a wild, but for Jen, they're not. So Jen has a choice. She can, she's got this wild. So she could use this to do a quadruple weed attack, um, or she could um, ignore these weeds and instead go for, remember, Jen has two cards. She always has two cards. So really, she's got one, two, three, and she could treat this as four. That means Jen could, she only gets one card, but she could draw four and pick one. So she'd have a lot of flexibility. And that's what Jen did. Jen wants to be able to customize the perfect rice field for her. Now instead, she could say, oh, I don't want to do either of those things. I want a worker. She could treat this as a single worker, but it would be a really weak one worker. So I think, really, Jen's choices are here. Either do a card and draw one, two, three, four and pick one, or do a weed attack and try to hit me with three weeds. And now if she does that, that will slow me down. Weeds don't prevent me from doing my work, but remember, if I harvest this, after I plant this and then empty the water out and then use workers to harvest, I'll score five points of the hundred I need. But if there are weeds in here, if there's one weed in here, I'll only score two points. If there's two weeds, I'll only score one. So weeds are a real pain in the butt. If somebody throws weeds your way, you've got to waste workers picking those weeds out before you can get your maximum harvest. So does Jen attack me to slow me down or does she go on ahead and just leave me alone and start building her own strategy? I think she will attack me and slow me down. She'll be able to get cards later. So she's doing a quadruple weed. This wild card is four weeds. Now it's interesting. Um, when you do weeds, Jen actually, because she did four weeds, she has the option to attack every single player in the game with four weeds. Now in a two player game that doesn't meet her much, it's just because it's just me. So she's going to hit me with four weeds. But here's the problem. Each patty, each card, can only hold two. So even Joe Jen has this awesome, super powerful weed attack. And if I had another patty out here, that means she'd be able to put two in this one and two in this one. As it is right now, it's kind of wasted because she's only going to put two in here. So now, my crafty weeds are choked up by weeds. Oh no, so I will have to waste workers to clear them out. Which means, Jen has slowed me down, but she hasn't pursued her own agenda. Attacking in this game, especially in a two-player game, is not necessarily the greatest thing. Uh, because while Jen has slowed me down, she's not doing her own thing, but we'll see how it works out. So that was it. Jen's turn is over. She could have gotten more cards, but she didn't. Instead, she hit me with weeds. My turn. All righty. So here's what I want. I want a lot of workers now. I got one, two workers. That is terrible! Because if I choose to do a worker action, that will, that's, it's not bad. Ideally, if I could have gotten, say, four workers, that would be great. I would do a worker action right now. Two of my workers would be needed to plant my two hexes. So that'd be two of them. The other two I would have to weed those weeds out. But I didn't get that. What did I get? I've totally forgotten. I think it was a card, right? Um, or was it a weed? I, whatever it was. Uh, okay, it was a weed, let's say. So, I didn't get that. Now, I could still go on ahead and say, hey, I'm going to do a worker action, which is two, which means I could use these two workers to get rid of these weeds or to plant the two spaces. Or instead, I could say, hey, I could weed Jen right back, but I know that's a waste of time. She's not going to fill this thing up anytime soon. There's literally no water to do it. Or I could say, hey, I want to do a card action. I can draw two cards and pick one and add more fields to give me more special powers. As it is, I think I will. No matter what, it's like a double action. It's, or it's a triple weed, which would still only be two for Jen, or a double card or a double worker. I'll take the double worker. I could use those to get rid of these weeds, but instead I will use them. I needed two workers to completely plant my fields. So now my fields are full of rice, growing and ready to go. My turn is over. It is now Jen's turn. Whoa! Okay, so Jen's got some workers and a wild that could be anything, and some cards. Right, so these workers aren't going to do Jen any good because she has no weed. She can't plant because she's not flooded, etc., etc. Jen's going to do the cards now. She, she paused for a second to slow me down. Now she's going to go for the cards. One, two, three, four, five. Jen gets to draw five cards and pick one. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Let's see what she likes. All righty, Blessed Fields. Um, Charmed Patties, Cool Water, Peaceful Fields, Favorite Spirit. So she gets to take one of these. And now that's a really powerful thing. Let's see. All right. If you, all right. So Favorite Spring. If Jen goes for this one, the special power of Favorite Spring is if you collect three matching spirits in your field, you may replace this card and take 15 rice. 
you could win this game never growing or harvesting rice at all. You could get all your points by leveraging special powers. So if Jen goes for favorite spring, all right, so that means she would need three. So basically, this is Barong. And so you can have up to four cards in your patty. So this would be Barong. Jen would want to get two more Barongs out. And then if she had three Barongs, and then on a later turn replace this one with a new one, she would score 15 points. Now Jen is very good at drawing lots of cards to get the ones she wants. Like you know, so there's more Barongs here. Um, actually, oh man, there's all these Barongs. If Jen could get all of them, she could do that right now. So that might be a thing that Jen would just go, forget about growing stuff, forget about the water and the workers and all that. Jen just tries to set collect cards if she goes for this thing. If she goes for Blessed Fields, this is gonna be easier to fill up than this quadruple. And when weeds are added to your patties, take one fewer. So um, Jen is sort of protected by weed attacks from me. But Jen knows I'm not likely to attack her with weeds anyway because weeds are more valuable to me as wild cards. Charmed patties, weeds cannot be added. So, uh, you know, and this is a simple little Little thing to fill up. Um, you just need a single worker, you need a single water, and so you can start harvesting it, which is why it only generates three points, but you are completely safe. No one can ever weed you, so that's pretty cool. Peaceful Fields. You gain seven rice for each Barong card in your field, including this one, if you do replace this card. Mmm, all right. Um, right, so basically that's a one-time thing. She has this out. Again, she tries to get a whole bunch of Barongs out, and at a time when she has, ideally, all four Barongs, when she replaces this, she'll score 28 points uh, from her peaceful field. So she doesn't try to grow anything. She just makes a lovely field, and everybody loves it so much that the Barong spirit will give her her rice. Uh, let's see. Is Jen worried about me attacking with rice? Um, I don't think so, because, again, rice is going to be not something I'm doing very often because I've got crafty weeds. So I don't think she cares about that. She doesn't care about the blessed. Those are two protections. Uh, cool water. Water counts as a wild. That gives her more flexibility. And this is something she could actually start trying to fill. And, um, but, you know, the fact that she can draw so many cards means she really does want to start collecting cards. I think she will go for the three matching spirits in the field. Right. Jen's going to go for favorite. So these ones are gone. And uh, let's see here. So that was her turn. She got a whole bunch of cards. She picked a perfect one. Now, when you add a new card to the field, you've got three choices. You can put it to the right of your current patties, or to the left of your current patties, or you can replace a, a patty completely. Uh, and once you have four, you have no choice but to replace. I think she will put this up water of this, because this is water she could fill up, and then later on, that water could go downstream to fill this up, um, and maybe get four in here. So that's how she's placed it, and she's still got this special power now. She's got this kind of objective she's going for, and that was her turn. It is now my turn. I'm gonna roll again. And let's see, I got some workers, I got a wild card, a card, and water. Now, if I choose to do the water, that means I can clear this water out. Once I clear this water out, I can start um, harvesting and getting points. But you can see, um, only, uh, but the, ideally, in a perfect world, if I clear water out now, I have no place for it to go to, so it will just go downstream and come back to the reservoir. If I could first get another card and put it here, then when I clear water out, I'll hold on to it. It will come down, and it'll move from this place to this place, so I can flood and do that. Oh, by the way, I forgot. When Jen, because Jen added a new card to the simulation, it had a water value, which means we had to adjust the overall available water. There should now be five. One, two, three, four, five. There's one, two, three. So there is now five total water available in the simulation, and still five more in the reserve. So I forgot about that. So before I release water to have it go all back to the reserve so Jen could get it for her gigantic fields, I don't think I like that. Instead, I'm going to go on ahead and do a card action. Although I only have a, no, it's a double. So I'm going to do a card action, which means I draw two and pick one. And Master of the Field, Spirit, fe spirit Friends. If you collect four different spirits in your field, you can replace this card. So this is kind of that set collection like what Jen has. I'm not interested in that. I'm actually trying to grow rice here. So I'll take Master of the Fields. If you have the most patty hexes this turn, no ties, take five. Um, oh, ah. Uh, um, but I don't have... The, uh, right, so when I put this down, I could score five points if I've got the most hexes, but I don't. I would have one, two, three, four, five. Jen has one, two, three, four, five, six. So I will not get the benefit of this. That's not great. Um, right, so maybe I do go for the other one instead. Yeah, I think I will go for the spirit frames. And now I could put it here or here. I'll put it down water 
so that when I release, I could flood this so I could start um, planting there as well. Uh, because if I put it up, then when I release the water, it'll go back to the reserve and I won't be able to hold on to it. Now, this is a new card which ch adds zero, so the available water doesn't change in the simulation at all. That was my turn. It is now Jen's turn again. And boom. What do we got here? All right, more cards. Workers and cards. Jen likes cards. Because um, remember, she's trying to get a lot of either Barong or Samara, because if you have three matching spirits, you can replace that card. So Jen's going to do a card action again. Because these workers aren't going to do anything for her. She, does ha she has no weeds. She um, can't plant anything because nothing's flooded. Even though more water is available now. So if she had gotten water, she could start trying to flood because she would only need two water to go in here so she could start planting. But that's not happening. Instead, Jen is doing another card. One, two, three, four, five. Jen is drawing five cards and she wants Barong or Samara. One, two, three, four, five. Barong, bar or no, or here's a Samara and a Samara. Oh my gosh, no Barongs. So. Uh, there's two Bawangs and a, a Batara Kala. So she's not taking those. She's going to take one of these. Master of Fate, re-roll any dice after your roll. So you get one re-roll. Or get another card. You know what? Jen has a, she's getting enough cards. She's going to dump her foresight. It'd be nice with a prophecy, but she's dumping that. Plus, oh my god, look how big that is. And instead, Jen is going to be Master of Fate. Now this is adding one more water to the overall supply. So now there's enough water to maybe fill up Jen's very thirsty uh, patties as well. She can either put this here or here. Let's go on ahead and put it up at the top. So if Jen gets, if Jen only gets one water, she can take it and fill this up. If she gets three water, she can take it and fill this and this. If she gets four, she can let all four pass through and get to that one. So there we go. Jen now has two Samaras. If she can get one more Samara, then she could replace this and score 15. So, uh, you know, Jen's going for it. And in the meantime, we, if she starts rolling some water, she can actually take use of it. And now it is my turn. Let's see what I got. All right. Oh, a lot of workers. Oh my gosh. But I don't need workers right now because I can't plant here. Wait, no. If I do workers, I could use two workers to get rid of these weeds. But that's but nothing else. Instead, I'm gonna do water. All right, and it's oh, but it's only a single. And the single's not good enough. If I had a if, well, first of all, if I use water anyway, I'm gonna do it anyway. Because either I'm gonna use workers to just get rid of two weeds, it's way overkill, or I'm gonna use water. Let's do water. So first of all, everybody has the option to release water if they want. Jen has no water, so she's not releasing any. I do. I'm releasing it and letting it go downstream. And now, this is not flooded anymore, this is flooded. So now, on a future turn, I could use a lot of workers to clear out these weeds, harvest this, and plant over here because I've kept control of my water. Nice. Um, right, anyway, so first of all, I released. Jen had nothing to release. Now, I'm only generating one, so that means I can take one from here. If I had a patty that needed only one, I could actually, like Jen, you know, Jen could act, only needs one to fill up her Master of Fate, but I can take this, but it's got no place to go because when you're having water go through, it has to completely fill an area or it just keeps going down to the reservoir. You can't partially fill a patty. So that one didn't do any good, but still, I've emptied this, I've flooded this. Next up, if I get a lot of workers, I can start scoring a lot of points. But in the meantime, it's Jen's turn. Turn. And what has she got? She's got some workers, she's got some weeds, she's got no wild cards, and she's got three cards. So she could draw three and pick a card, but what are her chances of getting a Samara like what she needs? Uh, instead, well these workers don't do any good though. So Jen could, she does have a couple of weeds, you know what? Since um, Jen would like to get more cards, three, she doesn't feel safe about getting a Samara, so workers aren't going to do her any good, Jen's going to weed me up some more. Um, each one of my patties can have up to two. Jen can throw two at every player in the game, which means just me. So Jen has now clogged up both of mine. So that means I'm going to have to spend more workers not harvesting or planting, but weeding. So that was Jen's turn while she waits for a bigger card hand. Now she's kind of regretting not getting that foresight so she could get even more cards. My turn. Wah! Alrighty. I can do some water. I've got four workers. I've got five workers. That's not bad. I will do it. I'm going to do workers. So. I'm not doing water, I'm not doing cards. One, two, three, four, five workers. How am I gonna spend those workers? I will spend two of them to plant here. And I will spend um, one of, or, and two of them to get rid of these two weeds. And that means I've got one left. And oh, wait, why are there three weeds here? There should only be two. Because uh, there can only be a maximum of two. Right, so uh, I, oh, oh, that's right, because, right. 
All right, I have these weeds. I, that was my mistake. All right, so I spent two of my workers to plant here. I spent two of my workers to weed here. That means I've got one more worker. Unfortunately, if I had two more workers, I'd use them to harvest here now, but I don't. So instead, I'll use my last worker to get rid of one of these weeds. So next turn, when I get some workers, I'll be able to make use of them. But in the meantime, Jen's weeds did slow me down while she's waiting for a better roll. And she gets it. No, she's got all these workers, but she does have three cards. She could weed me again, slow me down, but this is a really weak two. Or she, you know, she, or she could just keep keeping me in check while she's waiting for her super card rolls to get the um, targets she's going for. Because again, all these workers with nothing flooded, she wants some water so she can start filling these fields. Now she could do water. She could say, hey, this is just a single water. Which means, first of all, I would probably release this water back into the reservoir, so now I could harvest both of them. And then Jen would take one water, which means she could fill up this field and start planting. But one water, that's terrible. She wants a lot of water because she's got a lot of hexes to fill. So as crazy as it is, I think Jen, while waiting for a better roll, is just going to slow me down again. Here's two more weeds. Ah, my turn. All righty. And I got two, I got three workers. So if I want to do workers, I could, that's not bad, or let's see, I could start doing some more water, but there's no reason for me to flood these. If I get another card, I could put a third thing so I could flood later, so I could have more water control. I could weed Jen, um, but she hasn't even shown any interest in actually planting anything yet, so that doesn't make much sense. I think I will take the three workers, so I've got three total workers here. And with that, I will use one worker to get rid of this weed, and then two, three workers to harvest this space, and that means I am the first player to score. I just made five points, everybody. Hooray! All righty. And the rest of my dice are, are useless. It's Jen's turn. She rolls. And right, this is a bit more like it. All right. Oh, now this is a tough choice. Jen has one, two, three, four cards. Drawing four cards gives her a very good shot at getting the spirit she wants. Or she's got one, two water, which means she could, um, not, neither of us have anything to release. She could take two water and fill this up and start planting here. Does she want to continue trying to find um, her favorite spirits for the, for the favorite spirit, uh, uh, Patty, or does she actually want to start trying to plant stuff? Because that's a source of points as well. But nope, she's going to stick with her... Uh, with her grand card strategy and try to find more Samara. So she's got one, two, three, four cards she's drawn, and she's looking for a Samara. One, two, three, four. Barong, a one. Perfect, okay. In fact, it's the only one. So she will take Hand of Fate. You must change one die face each time you roll. You must, even if you think it's got the perfect roll. But, I mean, more often than not, that's gonna be good because you can get whatever you want. One of your dice is exactly what you like it to be. So Jen's gonna add this, the other ones. By the way, I, I should have said, it's weird. The, the prototype rules I have don't specify what to do with the cards you don't use. Um, basically, I just, I, you know, Jen and I, we've not had a game where we've gone through the entire deck yet, but I could see it possibly happening if a player goes for a really card heavy strategy like this. So I'm not sure if they're just supposed to go into a discard pile and then get shuffled and uh, put back in if the deck empties out, or if they're just supposed to go to the bottom of the deck as you go. Uh, as always, folks, Please watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on because, of course, we will actually make it clear there because that's where all my goofs are mentioned. Well, including, I think I forgot in the main run through, I was forgetting I could have used weeds as wilds when I was rolling. But anyway, so Jen's got Hand of Fate. She either puts it at this end or over here. She'll just go ahead and put it at the end. Uh, which means if she ever gets this filled with water, then the water could spill out over there. And now, from now on, Jen can change one die, or must change one die every roll. That is awesome. But more importantly, she has one, two, three Samaras, which means um, if she has three matching spirits in the field, which means in the future, if she replaces this card, she will get 15 points. Yeah! All right, which beats my five. But let's go back to me. I'm just trying to be a good farmer here. So I could do, all right, so remember, this is a wild. I think I was forgetting about that earlier. Uh, I was thinking more about Jen's strategy than my own. So basically, I've got, I could do a double water, I could do a quadruple card, or I could do a single weed or, or what have you. Um, I think I will go on ahead and do a double water. All right, so first of all, that means Jen could release water. She has none to release. I could release water. I have none to release. And then I take two water, one, two, and it starts coming down. I don't want it here because I want this to stay dry so I can harvest. Instead, I'll bring it down here and boom, this is now ready to be planted again because it's full of two water. So that was my turn. Easy peasy. All right, Jen's turn. And let's see here. So water. And all right. Oh, but remember, she must change one card. 
or one die roll because of the hand of fate. And now, I mean, heck, she's got one, two, three, four. She could give herself five and draw. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So she'll turn this to a card as well. And so she's going to do one, two, three, four, five. She's drawing five cards to finish this favorite spring. One, two, three, four, five. And, I mean, whatever she takes, she's going to replace this one be, uh, because that's the one that will trigger the 15 points. So does she want new hidden springs? This patty contains one magic water. There's always water or never water there at your choice. That's pretty cool. Or a double magic spring. Oh, by the way, oops, I forgot. When Jen added this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So actually almost all the water from the supply is in the reservoir. I forgot to add that. You always adjust stuff from the reservoir every time new cards get added or cards get replaced with old cards. You have to do that immediately. So what are we going to do here? Does Jen want good fortune? If you roll, um, if you roll one of each of the uh, four faces, no wild and no double worker, get 10 points. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's, oh, Particularly, oh, that's interesting. You must, all right, no, but this says you have to roll them, not that you get to change them. So I don't think you'd be able to use the hand of fate to, to make good fortune happen sooner. That's a good question, though, because I think you'd have to roll them. So it's a long shot to get um, of your five dice, four of them to be the unique icons. But it's 10 points when you do. Oh, only count actual icons rolled, not modifiers like the hand of fate. So that's, that makes sense. So she could go for that one. Ooh, dreadful plague. If you have four Batara Kala cards, which she doesn't, she has four Samara cards, destroy one card in each opponent's field with anything on it. Uh, if you do not, replace this card. Hmm. No, 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 I don't think so. Uh, right, because I, I certainly don't, I do not have a whole bunch of Batara Kalas, so I'm not interested in that one. So we'll say that one's out. Magic Springs, Hidden Springs, Glorious Dew. One extra water every time you roll. And a really big field to fill. So, and I mean, Jen would need a big field to fill. But then, she, you know, I think she's going to. Jen's going to go for Glorious Dew. She's going for big um, fields. All right, so, and replacing this with this one, she scores 15. So, boom, 15 points. All right, and that's gone. And these other ones are gone. And we now have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all of the water is available. Now, if this ever gets replaced with, like, say, a zero, and that means we have to take three out, but say there is no water to take out from the reservoir, as water eventually gets released and comes back to the reservoir, you take it out as it becomes available. But as it is now, let the rains come, folks. It's the rainy season. There's a lot of water coming because of all these fields. That was Jen's turn. And now it is my turn. Wah! All righty. So no weeds, so no wilds. I could do some water action, although I don't want to do any water action. Water action would only, well, no. So I'm not going to do any water because my water is perfect as it is. I could get cards or a single worker. That is not exciting. Let's go ahead and do a card. So I'm just going to draw two cards and pick one and add it. Lush patties or lucky day. If you roll three um, wilds, take 10 bucks, only count again, so you can't modify to do that. That's pretty funky. I don't like my chances. I like lush patties because my patties now require one fewer water to be filled. So these now only need one water a piece. I'll go on ahead and put this up front. All right, so now that's really cool. I, with three water, I could get all of these filled and ready to be harvested. So that was my turn. It is now Jen's turn. Let's see here. All right, so she's got a couple weeds. She could start weeding it up. She wants to start doing water now to start filling, but she can't seem to roll water to save her life. Oh, but remember, I totally forgot, her hand of fate. She must change something. So, but it's interesting, two water isn't good enough. If she changes this to a water, she gets two. That means she could fill this, but she could fill it with one. She'd like to get at least three water so she could fill this space and start, because it's tough to fill all these. Hmm. All right, well, anyway, though. So she's not going to do water. She wants at least two. So what's she going to do instead? She could change and make another weed and now hit me with three weeds. Yeah, let's do that. So Jen's just going to make another weed. She's hitting me with three, which means she can't fill this anymore. She'll go one, two and three. So now all my fields have been hit. I got to spend time on that. Okay, my turn. All righty. Ooh, look at all that water. Okay. Why can't Jen roll this water? She's been desperate for it. So two workers or three water. 
which means she'd get a chance to flood both of these so she could start. She doesn't want to flood this because this hasn't been harvested yet. But if she wants to harvest this, she only got two workers. So with two workers, she could, well, she would need both workers to do this, which means since there's two fields, she would only get one point. So if she uses these two to get one, or she could use these two to clear that out. That's kind of lame. I think she'll go for the water. So first of all, everybody has a chance to release water. Uh, I'm not going to, but, and then I can take three water. Righty. And, um, well, I don't want with the water. I, I will go on ahead and do the workers because I don't need the water right now. I'll do the workers just to clear these two out so later on I can get the full five points off of this. That was my turn. Jen's turn. Okay. Boom. That's more like it. I think it's going to rain big, folks. Jen can hand a fate. She's going to turn this into water. She's going to treat all these as water. Oh, my God. She got, she would have been able to have a lucky day if she had that card, but she doesn't. Jen has four water. First of all, everybody can release their water if they want. I'm not going to because I haven't planted here yet. Jen has nothing to release, and now she brings in four water, and she can let it trickle down however she wants. She needs five for this. So she could let them all trickle down and have four here to start working on this. But instead, I think she'll let it start trickling. She'll have one here. Three is not enough. Three is not enough. Three is enough. So now Jen has two fields filled, and she can start planting in those. This one generates 10 points. This one generates three points. Nice. OK. Back to me. What am I going to do? All righty. Oh, here's all my workers. That's what I was waiting for. And plus, remember, weeds are wild, so I'll turn it into a worker as well. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six workers. With my six workers, I believe, first of all, I will use two of my six to plant over here. I will use, um, so I've got four left. I will use two more to harvest this, which is another five points. I've now gone to 10. And I have two more. I will use those two to get rid of these two weeds. Pretty happy with that. Okay, big work day. Jen's turn. All righty. So she's got, um, right. Uh, oh, so she's got two workers. Could be three workers, and with Hand of Fate, she could make it five workers. Hmm, if five workers would give her, yeah, so Jen's going to do that. Jen is going to um, take one, two, uh, three, because that was a wild, four, five. Jen's got five workers. She needs one, two, three, four, so she is planted here and here. So that is 13 points waiting on some harvesting. Okay. Jen, uh, she was having fun with her set collection for a while, but she's decided to actually grow some rice for a change since she, she's a rice farmer and all that. Okay, my turn. Let's go. All righty, no workers. Oh, but no, I got three wilds. Okay. So what do I need? I need some more water because I need to flood these and I need to empty that. So let's uh, say this is three water. Oh, no, but I want, yeah, yeah. So let's say this is three water. Right, okay, so with three water, first of all, we have the opportunity to release. I am going to release, and Jen is going to release. This is at the end of the way, so this goes down. Ah, oh, shoot, so this is kind of a pain. Oh man, this, this is where things get really cool. Let's just say, for example, it was like this. Jen could now release this and this, and all four could come here and fill this up, because it's tough to fill up four. But she wasn't able to do that, because that's not her layout. But you can see how water control is everything in this game. Jen has a slightly sloppy layout here. So Jen releases this. It goes back to the reservoir. She releases this because she needs to empty these. And no, one is not enough. One is not enough. Doesn't want. So Jen just lost all that water. She could have. Ugh. Okay, but anyway, so we've done releasing. And now I am bringing in three water because I'm the one who triggered this. I'm bringing in three. And I need um, perfectly one, two, three. So there we go. Jen's turn. She wants a lot of workers to harvest all this stuff. Wah! She did not get a lot of workers. But remember, hand of fate lets her change something. So she could say, hey, there's one, two, three, four, five workers, which would be one, two, three. Yeah. So Jen's got one, two, three, four, five workers, which is one, two, three, four. Jen has harvested both of these, and that has given her 13 points plus her 15, puts her at 28. Jen is zipping right along. Nice. Okay. And that was that. It's my turn. Okay, so I've got a wild and a couple of weeds, which are wilds. Now that Jen's actually started growing rice, I might want to use these weeds as actual weeds because she can score so many points off these big honkers, as you just saw. I could just go on ahead and do three weeds, and go, or two of them would come here and one of them would go into another one. So I'd probably put it over here into her easy-to-fill one, so that would slow her down. Or instead, since these are all wilds, I don't have to attack her at all. 
I could go big. I could say I've got four workers, which I need one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm going for four workers here, and I don't care about the cards. With my four workers, I will spend one, two to plant, three to plant, and four to get rid of this weed. So now, uh, if I can get these emptied out and harvest, I've got 13 points waiting to be harvested. So that was my turn, Jen's turn. The game is starting to speed up. So what is Jen going to do? Ah, well, first of all, she can change something. She could get some water. She could get three water, which would let her just fill this. Ah! Oh, wait a minute. I forgot, Jen has glorious dew. She's already got one water. So if she changes this to a water, then she's got one, two, three, four. She has four water, which is enough for her to go um, Master of Fate and then this one, or to come all the way over here and fill up the big kahuna. I think she's going to spread it out, though. One, one, two, three, like before. Uh, that is kind of a bummer, though, having this three at the end where there's nothing for it to roll out to. Oh, well. So, so that's it. Jen is now ready to start planting in here again. And meanwhile, over to me. Oh, yeah. I am going to, uh, let's see here. So I've got two wilds or two weeds if I want to mess her up. I've got, or so that could be five workers. But I need to get the water out of the way because these are flooded. That's what I need. I need water. So one, two, three water. And first of all, I'm going to release. Jen could release. She doesn't want to release anything. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and release because this is all good. And now I could bring water in. I don't care. Even if I had no water, I would release just to get rid of this because now I can harvest in the future. That was that. Jen's turn. All right. Remember, she's got one water. She's got two extra cards if she wants more cards. Um... So she's got one, two, three. She'd have three. That's not enough to put more water over here. I think she wants workers. One, two, um, right. So this is one, ah, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven workers. Jen needs one, two, three, four. So she has planted both of these again. All right. And then it is my turn. And right. What am I going to do with this business? I want workers. I got no weeds. So to my name, I've got three workers here, which means I could get one, two, three. Let's just go on ahead and do that before Jen hits me with some weeds. So that is eight points. So I just went from 10 to 18 and nothing else. I just used workers. I didn't give myself more stuff so I could grow more. I didn't bring water in because I didn't need any. But now I'm going to start needing water in the future. It is Jen's turn. And what has she got here? All right, she needs to let water out, but she'd also like to let more water in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jen's going to do water. She's got... First of all, she can change things. So she will uh, force this to become a water. Right. So she's got one, two, three, four water. First of all, everybody gets to release. I got nothing to release. Jen's going to release this. And she's going to release this. But it's just going to come down over here. So um, she's put that in. So that, but now at the end of her turn, if she doesn't have enough to fill a space, she loses it. But it's not the end of her turn yet. So she's just had this water come downstream over to here to this four. Oh, no, no, she'll have it come down here to this five, because remember, she's got one, two, three, four. So here comes four more. One, two, three, four. Boom. The glorious dew is upon us. Now, Jen's got to get five workers all at once to plant this thing. Then she's got to let the water out. Then she needs five workers again all at once to get the 25 points. But this hand of fate is really helping making that happen. All right, Jen might want to get some more wild card generators to be able to fill this up more effectively. Uh, but anyway, so that was Jen's turn. Um, big water in glorious dew. My turn. All right. I need two workers to fill this out. And I can totally do that. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'll just use these two workers for, that's a wild. I'll do that. That's five more points for me. One, two, three, four, five. I've almost caught up with Jen. And now I need to flood this place or I need to get another card. So I have more flexibility like what Jen's pulling off here. And Jen, meanwhile, says, give me workers. All righty. Jen wants five workers. She's got one, two, three, four. Hand of fate, let her do this. She's got six workers. She needed five. She's just planted it, folks. Oh, that is terrifying. Now she lets the water out. She gets five more workers. 25 points. I was doing well at the beginning, but only having three cards. I'm throwing away a whole special power that could really help kickstart stuff or give me more control over how I let water flow downhill in and out of the reservoir. Um, what's going to happen next? I don't know, folks. So I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Rice Dice is all about. Now, if you want some high thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.